That's right, I'm finally doing a process video because you all seem really interested in that and I figured I might as well give it a go. If you're new here, I'm Paranoid Rat, who is given the power of a pencil which I intend to abuse. And this week, I'm going to talk about how I go about drawing in my style and my process, I guess. So, yeah. So, style is a whole thing. I could make an entire video about finding art styles. It's a nightmare. And for the longest time, I was really frustrated over having an inconsistent style. And I can, and I could like rarely replicate it. And it, I feel like every drawing just looked completely different. Like every, they were like similar and you could like see like traits in my style, but it was, it, the process itself like never stayed consistent and I never liked it whenever I did. And it was really annoyed me. And literally in like just the few months that I've been on YouTube, did I finally like create a style I'm like really happy with. And y'all were asking about it. And now I'm making a video. So this is kind of cool because I didn't think I would actually have a style consistent enough to do this. So that's fun. And before I get too far into it, yes, I am drawing Alistair from Hasman Hotel. That show has exterminated every remaining brain cell and replaced them with Hasman Hotel. And I love it so much. This is, this is my life and I had to draw him. So, you know, perfect for this video. So naturally the first thing I do is I sketch it out and I usually just use like a pencil brush sometimes I use like a different one but it really doesn't matter here because you're not gonna be able to see it in the finished finished product anyway it's just a brush that works well so I can plan out my composition and drawing and whatnot I generally try to use as few sketch layers as possible because I feel like the more I do like the drawing gets stiffer and it feels a lot more natural when I just do like one sketch layer and try to keep it less defined where I kind of have to figure it out a lot more my uh, line art because my line art is very sketchy too and again it just keeps it looser and feeling more natural in the pose but if I am usually if I am drawing a more complicated pose with multiple characters I kind of need to do a few other sketch layers so you know you, you figure it out whenever you're drawing and just whatever you need this this isn't really special at all I don't know why I'm talking about it so much then for line art lately i've been using the uh streaks brush on procreate which is very underrated i really like the texture and shape of it and how it works i adjusted a few of the settings to be more tailored to what i need but i i really like how it works line weight i kind of have to do intentionally if i like i have to like do it manually if i want to do too much of it but I generally keep the line work pretty simple and sketchy and loose. I kind of, <laughs> there's like a whole spectrum in my art, whether it's going from like super clean, like thick art, like line art, or thin sketchy mess. That's basically just a second sketch layer. There, I'm usually somewhere in between depending on my mood, but I, I always like doing a more sketchy line art. A lot of like my old art, I would even keep in the sketch layer and like, I don't know, I like the texture it gives, so I generally don't uh, spend too much time getting every line right, but, you know. Again, this is, it's really hard to describe my style, because this is something I just kind of do more in intuitively, if that makes sense. Next, I select the inside of the lines and just drop in a base color. From there, I add in my base colors. Sometimes this takes a bit as I consider contrast and color palette in general, but you know, since uh, this character already has pre-designated colors, I just use those, so it didn't really take as long. And, on my, and I'm just gonna say, I, color, I did not color pick these. Whenever I'm doing fan art, I prefer not to, because I feel like it then looks too much like the original, which, like picking your own colors, like naturally you'll gravitate towards colors and it honestly becomes part of your style honestly and i tend to go for warmer colors so this character is really fun to draw yeah you know so i just had fun finding the colors and putting them on no nothing much here and sometimes i do some like slight rendering like on the cheeks and stuff but i usually just go straight into making a clipping mask over my uh, flat color layer 
And then I pick a bright blue, purple, or pink, depending on the color palette, and draw on my shadows. You know, pretty basic there. The color doesn't matter as much here because I usually change it after. And then I then take that clipping mask layer and once I'm happy with where the shadows are and put them on multiply or overlay, again, depending on which I like more based on the drawing. And if I don't quite love the color, I us I'll usually edit it in uh, the huge saturation and color thing and just play with the opacity until I'm happy with it. These are just kind of like a base for the rendering, so I kind of have something to work with. And, you know, uh, styles, I'm sure if you've like seen any other video on the internet about art styles, you should know that a good art style is a combination of a bunch of different artists and uh, muses over the years, where like basically like everything I've like done so far in at all in this whole drawing it is just things I've learned from other artists and just kind of combined it all into one to make my own style, I guess. So, yeah. Now the rendering, which I know is the part you were all very excited about. Generally, I do this all on the same layer. Like, I take my shadow layer and I merge it down once I'm happy with it. I, whenever I first started di digital art, I was really baffled by the concept of layers for some reason. And I like rarely use them. Like, if you got me to use like two layers, it was a good day. And then as time went on, I, would then, I was then like using like 38 at a time and it was a nightmare. And now I'm back to just doing like a few, just a few layers and I usually merge a lot of them down at the end just cause I, it, it's easier to work that way than having a bunch of layers. Especially if you have a more rendered style as I've kind of developed that becomes, um, having a lot of layers is, uh, just kind of cumbersome, I guess. And so rendering is what you, a lot of you guys were asking about and what I was most unsure of how to uh, talk about. Cause I don't, like trying to think of like having a process, like I was like doing this drawing, trying to think how I would describe what I do. Cause I do so much of this just intuitively when it comes to like color picking and uh, what I blend and what I don't. So bear with me here as I try to explain my process. So I have my shadows in and I usually blend them in in some of the places. Like I try to keep a mix of like harsh lines and um, blended ones cause I, nice contrast. And then whenever I'm working, I start in the shadows almost always. And if the shadows are cooler toned, I'll grab a warm like pink or red or if they're warm shadows, I'll take like a blue or something. I guess this is, this is my attempt at faking color theory and it works really well and I take it and blend it into the shadows so it gives like a lot of variation really quickly in them and blending in general is something a lot of artists recommend to steer clear of if you're um, starting out in digital art like I basically didn't let myself use the smudge tool for the longest time because anytime I did it was a nightmare but it's it's you know I've gotten like a lot more confident with it and I feel like I can use it and make it not look hideous. Yeah, so I usually use it on like the Nikki roll brush because I like the texture and I turn down the opacity a lot so it doesn't just, uh, so I have to work a little bit harder to get it, it to smudge entirely so it's more subtle when I work with it if that makes any sense. Blending those shadows, I start to get more mid-tones as it blends with the base colors and I just kind of use those throughout the drawing it's again it's so intuitive to me about which colors need to be used where but I basically I get to create like a nice textured um fade between the shadows and the base tones my favorite thing to render above all else is most certainly hair I thought about making just an entire video get dedicated to how I render hair uh, but I didn't do that and I'm just gonna cram it in here so as I'm sure you saw in the footage, the hair was done by, so I already had shadows in it. And then I decided to make a highlight over where the light would hit it, I guess, and make it look really shiny. Cause I like drawing shiny hair. I don't know why, but I just take a lighter color and over like the chunks of hair, uh, do 
those little like highlight shapes and then underneath it I take the shadow color from the hair and then blend it out and above it I do a lighter color and then blend it out and she gives it this really smooth gradient that just it looks so juicy and I love it and it makes me really happy and then of course I add in like more details here and there I, I hope I explained that well I really have no idea if this is making any sense now, I'm sure if you've seen and give my video, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you might have seen me using this technique that I do in like a lot of the rendered places to add texture, where I just kind of color drop colors from that section, like of like the shirt or hair or whatever. Not actually, no, I don't usually use this on hair. Uh, area that of the piece that just needs more texture, and I just do little um, lines in that color. And I color drop different colors and like spread it out where it gives like a, it like blends it together, but it adds highlights where it has like a almost hairy look. I don't know. It's really fun. And I like using it on like, if I'm like rendering leaves or something or a jacket or yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think like when I use it, but it, it looks nice and it's fun. I'm really trying hard to describe it here. And I sometimes then blend them out because it just gets that color across the image a lot more nicely. And yeah, it's it's fun. And I'm, tr I'm trying really hard here. But yeah, basically once I'm happy with the base rendering, I I then uh, make a layer a above the line art layer. And I don't always do this, but sometimes I just do a little bit of extra rendering on top where sometimes like where the lines are like getting in my way or I just wanted to make something pop a little bit more or sometimes just like do like a highlight in the eye or something I, I just do like a small bit of rendering here I mean sometimes I'll go overboard and like do a lot here but you know again all depends on the piece and what I'm feeling in that day and once I'm happy with all the rendering I merge the render and line art layers, or it's all just on one layer. It it works well. And above it, I make a clipping mask, and using a textured brush, brush, just put just put on a bunch of colors on top. Which I know I've talked about this in the past, and it feels like cheating how well it works every single time. I just do a bunch of colors, usually like usually warmer tones because that's what I like in a piece and I like how it looks and I usually keep like more like darker purple colors at the bottom and do like a warm or like yellow around the face and like do a fade so it just it adds like a gradient through the entire character and centers your eye like around where you want it to look like the face and then once I'm happy with those colors, I then just mess the blending layers until I find one I like. Sometimes I do a few of these layers, but usually just one works. And it is like magic. Like if I'm getting frustrated with like the color palette and I don't love it, I just tell myself to hold off until the end and I can do this step because it works so well and I'm so happy with it. I think there's like maybe one time it didn't work great and then I just adjusted the colors and then it did. This once again it feels like cheating I, I haven't seen anybody really talking about doing this i mean there's probably somebody else out there like i'm not saying i've invented this but it is like magic and i love it so much highly recommend if you are struggling with your color pal palettes and want to just like make them all combine <laughs> and like look nice together it's cool and then i added a simple background to this just something to make uh alistair pop and it was done uh yeah thanks for watching this video i know a lot of people were asking for this and i was really nervous to make one because i didn't really know how to describe it and i still don't know if i did a good job but i tried and i hope this helped if you're um trying to learn how to render or just develop your own style because i think i i've honestly learned a lot about making mine from watching videos like these from other artists so please don't copy because that's called stealing and i'm not busting you out of jail because my style you stole <laughs> but again it's i think it's helpful to see other artists process is yeah anyways 
thanks for sticking to the end. If you want to support me, you can uh, subscribe, like, comment here, or you can follow me on Instagram at Paranoid Rat. And if you really want to support me, I have a Redbubble shop, also under Paranoid Rat. There's not a lot of things in there, but there's a few designs I'm really happy with and you might like. So, thanks for watching to the end. Uh, I'll see you next time. Pew pew.